listen up. You, 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 you are now listening to Inside the Nation Radio, brought to you by, by, by us, bringing you everything from current events to what's really happening in your bedroom. Turn up the volume, and let's discuss. Welcome back to Inside the Nation Radio. It's your boy Abaya Adonaya Israel. We back again with my co-hosts Darash and Rick Judah. We got a very, very special guest today. Need no introduction. Everybody know. Ari Spears. Man, how you doing, my brother? Good. How you dog? Man, I can't complain, man. Listen, I've been uh I've been trying to stay up, been trying to grind and you know, get things done. The world got different plans, but we're gonna make it work, you know. That's the only way you can get is by grinding. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. <clears throat> so, hey, so listen, let's check this out. I'm glad that you you came through. You know, I've been following you for quite some time. I can't put <laughs> years on it because I don't know, but it's been a long time. It's been some years. Um, and one thing, what what I think what first caught my attention about you, like you, I think you were doing impersonations. Man, you were doing some impersonations, and it was funny as hell. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, wow, this dude do pretty good. And um, I remember recently, I don't, well, I saw the Drink Champs recently. Shaq was on there. And he was saying that his favorite impersonation is when Ari Spears does it. Were you aware of that? Yeah, somebody somebody sent that to me. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I love Ari Spears' impersonation. I mean, it's, it's, let me ask you this. Is Shaq the easiest you know, I, impersonation? I, listen, I, I, I love uh, Noriega and DJ Ethan, man. They're good brothers. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I've talked to Nori. Uh, quite a few times, and the goal is to get me back on for round two. But uh, I, and if I'm, if somebody don't tell him, I'm gonna tell him. I wish he would shut the fuck up sometimes and let his <laughs> guests talk. Because while I appreciated Shaq saying me, he was interrupting Shaq as he was trying to say me. So he, he you heard him say, you know, Aries, Aries spit, but Nori kept talking. Yeah, and I, you know, I, you know, I love Nori. That's my man. But God, the greatest, the, the, the <laughs> great interviewer knows to let the artists talk. They the guys. He was, he was interrupting your props. That's what he was doing. Yes. Evidently. <laughs> shut up. Hey, you know what? And you know Shaq mumbles. So <laughs> <laughs> what's crazy about that is, because when I did watch the Drake Champs, it was like, I had the same thought. Like, damn, like, let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. I'm like, bro, let him, I want to finish what he, I want to finish hearing what he had to say. Like, right. you know, Nori, you cool. I like you, but you know what I mean? Right now, ain't nobody watching Inside the Nation because of Bayer. They want to hear what Aries got to say. So I need to let him talk, but I feel you on that. Yeah. So yeah. So Shaq, he says that you're the the best in, in uh, impressions. You do the best impressions, man. It, again, I'm like, it seems like it's easy to do Shaq though. Is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, in terms of it's not you're not hitting a high note, you know, um, Shaq is real bassy and breathy. So as far as, you know, if you were a singer, it's it's much easier to stay in that pocket than it is if you were doing somebody with a higher register. Uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> Shaq, is, the key to Shaq is 2810. You know, when it, whenever you hear him on TNT. As long as I get 2810, if I get 2810, I'm going to dominate. If you say 2810, <laughs> then you got it. Oh, man. I wonder if I, I should have tried to do a Shaq impersonation. I don't know if I can. I'm going to practice. You know, I would tell you, and, and, you know, this is where people obviously, listen, man, what's, what sucks now is you can't have an opinion, you know, and, and anytime you have an opinion that goes against somebody's narrative mm -hmm. or what they think, it's viewed as hate or yeah. bitterness. So yeah. you're not allowed to have an opinion. Uh, um, and I'm very opinionated. Um, so just because I'm in the game don't mean, don't mean I can't have feelings about the game. Uh, <laughs> and when Nori was saying who did the best impression, and I know I know I expected him to mention Farrow. Uh, I want to say he said, oh, Jamie Foxx. I expected him to say Jamie because I knew I saw them two do Shaq. But when he said Kevin Hart, I got mad. Because I just went, that shit was garbage. Bruh. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Hart did an impression of he, he yeah, did that? When he was when he was on inside the NBA on TNT. First of all, yeah. it looked like he had the 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 uh Ray John Rondo head. Because it was the way <laughs> the ball cap didn't even make his head round. It looked alienish. You know, it, yeah. it was oh, a weird man. round to it. 
And then on top of that, the impression was garbage. Straight garbage. Yeah, I got to agree. You, you I, think I, didn't, he, I didn't think it was that great. You think he said yeah, that so because he, he needed to be like... Kevin, I, I, was, I was insulted, nigga. Yeah. You think he, you think he did that because he felt like he had to? I don't know. I, I, you know, listen, the one thing I will say is this, and this is what f***ed me up. You know, I always tell people doing impressions is like having an ear for music. People that sing, they, they can hear a note. They got to be in pocket. They got to be on the right key. Uh, in, uh, inflections, riffs. So you have to have an ear. And, and when, I, when I'm when i going through Instagram and I see certain dudes do impressions, I, if, I, I don't know why I take it so personal that I really get mad. Because I'm just going, well, I read the comments. This is what you do. People, it's your profession. Oh, Huh? Yeah, but yeah, I read the comments and people are like, yo, that's amazing. And I'm going, what the f are you hearing? Yeah. Like, I mean, what, what, what is the tone, the tonality? What are you hearing? Did you think that's like, amazing? Here's a couple of like the people like the rappers today. I know exactly like. how this man feels because I feel that same way about music. I know exactly oh, how he feels. Oh, this man goes crazy about music. <laughs> there's, there's, a couple, there's a couple white boys who do Tony Soprano who are trying to do Tony Soprano. And I'm reading the comments and the people are like, oh my God, that's fire. It's so on point. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'll comment and go, what the fuck are you listening to? <laughs> and then I go, and, and, and this, this might really be where some people think, okay, I'm being arrogant, but I'm like, yo, if you want to hear great Tony Soprano, peep my sh Anytime you do Tony fucking Soprano, yo, this is throwing the fuck of this. When I talk about, oh my guys, Uncle Joe, Johnny Shaq, Christian for pussy, shell. At the fuck of Bottom Edge, fuck of that shit. So if you think it's not fucking for real, check it out. You gotta say the Jadish and the Uncle Joe. Hey, so, right, and, and, right. And, I'm, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I'm just like, if we buy in a product, you want the strongest cocaine. You don't want nothing stepped on. You don't want nothing with, nothing with baking soda. You want pure Bolivian uncut yayo. And I'm just sitting here going, it's amazing. These people think this shit is dope and it's garbage. And 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 I'm and I, because I'm calling it, now I'm a hater. Oh, you're now absolutely a hater. You well, so he, we live it, we live in a uh, a society of you have to you have to affirm yep. uh, for, but you have to affirm people. If you don't, you automatically a hater. And it's funny that you said, like, yep. you don't want to seem arrogant. I'll be honest. When I first started hearing you, this was, man, I might have been like six or seven years old when I heard Aerie Spears, right? I was like this. I think probably it might have been that Mad TV skit with you uh, as DMX Mama. And so I was like, damn, that's Steve. He, <laughs> he doing this shit, right? Then I heard the Shaq impression. And then then the 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 the, the Denzel Washington, it was, it was a gang of them, right? What so, about the DMX freestyle? I heard the DMX hey, freestyle. Hey, that DMX freestyle was fire. Hey, oh, uh, man. <laughs> hey, I, listen. Weak. I ain't gonna lie. I was dying. Listen, but listen real quick. You, 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 just, Go you ahead. just mentioned Denzel. Like I give the credit where credit is due. And like <clears throat> I tell people all the time when they ask me, yo, do Denzel. I go, yo, I feel silly doing Denzel now. Matter of fact, I retired doing Denzel because of all the dudes that do Denzel, Reggie mm. Reg, me, Pharaoh, Godfrey, Dean Edwards. I said the one thing that puts us all to shame, where we all should retire. <laughs> it's my man, uh, C. King. Now, most people don't even know who this is. He, nope. he's, he's not a popular comedian. He ain't been on no stand-up shows, no specials. But he's a brother out of Brooklyn. Uh, his Instagram is I am, I am, uh, I want to say C underscore King. I am C. I think it's I am C underscore King. When I tell you this nigga is Denzel, it's a rap. It's a rap. This makes us look pathetic. You gotta so, check him out. Right. As much as I will big up myself and prop myself up, yo, I have no problem giving a hat tip to, to the to the because they deserve it. Right. Um and C King, man, that boy is a motherfucking monster. Like if you close your eyes, the way he hits. The note, the, the 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 details. You swear, you you. There's no way you can tell me that's not Denzel. I wonder if so, I've ever seen this guy before. Trust me, dude. When you see, yeah, I've it, seen him before. 
Yeah, when you see it, and then you go look at my Denzel. Oh, the comparison. Okay, like that, huh? But that's that's a sign. That's a sign that when somebody's being genuine, when I can say, "Hey, listen, hey, listen, this suck, but this is good." I'm not just running around hating. I'm just telling you what's good and what ain't good. That's that's the fact. One thing that people, some people don't know about you. (laughs) And I included me. I mean, although I've seen you do it in your show, I just never, it just never put two and two together. You sing. A little bit. Nah, bro, I heard yeah. you hit a note, bro. <laughs> I heard you hit a note. You hit it. I, I'm, I am no Jamie Foxx. I wish I was. Because uh, Jamie, when it comes to that singing shit, like I sent out a post the other day where he was singing some song about his grandma, about grandma. And I said, yo, man, I personally prefer Jamie's music over his stand-up. Now, in acting, he's the Rach Ray is one of the greatest movies of all time. I watched that religiously. Yeah. yeah. Acting, he's the truth. Singing, he's really the truth. And I'm like, I didn't even say in the post that he wasn't funny. I just said I prefer his music more than his stand-up. And most people understood where I was coming from, right, but right. I swear, lo and behold. Yo, you sound like a hater. Yo, you hate me. And I'm like, first of all, my fucker, I never said the man wasn't funny. Right. I just said I prefer one art form over his other. Right, right. What the fuck is wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. But yeah. what I what I got multiple skills. What I've learned is, like I told you, it's another platform. We got a, a weedy people platform. The thing is like almost hundred million views, two point eight million views on videos. And no matter how perfectly you say something. No matter, there's another 200,000 people who agree with what you said. Yet, there's always that few 100, 200 people that going to say something that take, pull out of context something you never said, never meant, and they're going to make it what they're going to make it to be what they want it to be. It, it's We can't avoid it. It's just, it is they filter it is. they filter that shit in their brain before it registers in there. And then and then they yeah. have a whole different meaning of what was being <laughs> what right. was being said. Yeah, I, this 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 this. This moisture, this this moist ass <laughs> between the thighs culture we live in is is just it's, it drives me nuts. I, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm I was born in '75. I'm an '80s baby, so I come from that last era of when it was you know I don't want to use the word toughness, but there was a grit. There was a there was right. a you know what I'm saying. She was raw. I'm an '80s you know? baby. You can say it again. Yeah. It, it just, you know, <laughs> Right. This this era we live in now is just it's it's pathetic, man. It's soft as baby. The only thing to me that's great about this era is technology, and yeah. even that's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, yep. it is. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, these phones gives everybody a voice, yep. and while that is a good thing, everybody don't deserve to be heard. Right. You know that's true. Now that's everybody true. Don't right. Keys to the gun cabinet. That's right. When you, when you give them the keys to the gun cabinet, mixed with liquor. Is his missing limbs. <laughs> right. Now that's true. Now, you know, Einstein had a statement where he said um, he fears that technology will make a generation full of idiots. And I think that that's true. I ask how many people, hey, hey, what's your mama phone? Ah, oh, damn, it's on speed dial. I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there's been some blessing and some curses mm-hmm. to, to technology. I mean, when I'm trying to get somewhere, have you ever looked at a map? Like an actual map? Yeah. Thank God them days is gone. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Thank God for GPS. Thank yep. God for caller ID. Mm-hmm. You know, th- it, 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 listen, my biggest thing I get from my cell phone is I get to look at free porn. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> then, once upon a time ago, you had to go into a shop with a trench coat on. Now, you beat your, you beat your home looking at porn. Yeah, so everything. other than that, you know, other than that, and obviously I'm being funny, but, yeah. you know, obviously there's some, 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 educational tools on there where right. if you know how to work it uh you know there's money to be made so right. it's it's the blessing and the curse but I mean, you know it... <clears throat> yeah so i you know i prefer some of that old school shit, though so so yeah. question you you being you being a comic um you've seen you know the transition over the years as far as society is concerned how do you feel like do you feel like to a degree you have to almost censor some of the shit you say when you're doing comedy? Do you feel like you'll you'll receive like a... Or do you just like, I, I don't give a damn, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And, and <laughs> if you're mad at it, you're mad at it. You know, I guess I guess that question needs to be answered by people who have something to lose. 
uh, you know, if you if you on TV or you got a movie career, obviously what you can say can maybe cost you your job. Right. Um, I would hate to think that, you know, especially for stand up comedy, this being the last staple of free speech right. or what's supposed to be free speech uh, that you would censor yourself. Uh, you know, three of the greatest comedians of all time, one of which, uh, two of which who have passed on. But, you know, uh, Dave Chappelle said, you don't know where the line is in comedy until you cross it. George Carlin mm. said, you should oh. know where the line is and deliberately cross it. And then Patrice O'Neill said, good comedy is where 50 percent of the audience is loving you. But the other 50 percent is horrified. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I don't I don't live to do jokes and to do shock value just for the sake of doing shock value because people can see through that. Um, but whatever I do always has to start with substance and you know uh, anything that's authentic. And in that will become shocking because that is the reality of the subjects you're talking about. Right. So shocking can be had organically uh, based on what you're talking about as opposed to coming out and just being shocking. Right. Right. And that to me, I, you know, I prefer that kind of comedy, man. I, I, I just, there's something about hardcore realism. And the harder something is to talk about, the fact that you can make that funny is where the genius lies. You know, if you're talking about abortion, if you're talking about politics, if you're talking mm -hmm. about race, if you're talking about homosexuality and transgender, all of those things are hot button issues. So it's a lot harder to find the funny in that so, and if you can find funny in that then you are a genius you you have oh, they, they be tearing that shit up dave Chappelle. right that's that. what i that's oh what yeah, he is good at that monster. so let me ask you this let hey. me ask you there is another hot button issue right now um and we was talking about shaq earlier and Kyrie and Kanye and now recently shaq and and, and let me let me let me say this because i keep saying this before i even bring this topic up shaq is one of my if i had to pick a favorite person on the earth Shaq would be that person because he's a charitable brother every time you see a clip of this dude he's helping somebody doing something he's a fun big dude like to have fun like to help people but there was a, a comment made towards uh I'm not sure if you've been following it or not maybe maybe not towards Kyrie Irving about a link that Kyrie Irving posted about the whole thing with him and Kanye is uh, dealing with right now this is about the Jews Irving. about the Jews that yeah. link I gotta that go <laughs> hey, but you know that's really the, that's, that's really what's happening right now, though. That's really what's happening that's right now. That's the response now. right there. And, and, and listen, the listen, listen. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, if you got to tread carefully, like, yeah. I understand. You know, just we look, everything listen, became politically correct. There's certain groups. It just feels like you don't fuck with uh, the fruit of Islam. Uh, and the Jews. And if you do, you will be missing. That's it. And, and the no Russians DNA too. to be found. You said it on Vlad, the Russians too. The, the Russian, you, no <laughs> DNA, nothing. It's gone. Oh, uh, man. But so, wait, really quickly. And, and But so here's here's what I want to ask you. Because here's, let me ask you this, because I didn't, I, I, I've, I've heard the heat around Kyrie, but I'm not too familiar with what okay. he's actually in trouble for. Well, so he takes a link of a movie called um, Negroes to Hebrew, Hebrews to Negroes. Hebrews to Negroes. Hebrews to Negroes. And it's on Amazon. It's on Prime. So he watches the documentary. He posts the link pretty much saying, hey, I <clears throat> watched the movie. So now he's losing contracts and you know sponsorships and all that type of stuff so now the inside the nba everybody's talking about it shaq makes a comment charles barkley makes a comment and shaq says hey he's an idiot for doing this now what i'm trying to get to is he only posted a link nobody's saying anything about amazon for selling the documentary and right. what shaq i don't think shaq i don't even think shaq knew this at the time but the big fallout with Kyrie. Kyrie's an idiot for doing this Two things bad, Shaq, and I, I, you got to bounce back, Shaq. Two things bad. One, while talking about the the hurt that he caused, you just call you just called a brother an idiot in front of millions of people. That's hurtful for one. Two, the other thing is the movie that you're saying he is an idiot for posting, you premiered it in your theater. That's not a good look because now you're in front of millions of people saying, "Hey, man, don't do this, don't do that. You're an idiot for doing this," but you, you premiered it in your in your theater. 
So now with that, it kind of runs hand in hand with the Kanye situation. And they, everybody's interpreting this as they're saying uh, they're not Semitic. They never said they weren't Semitic. They're just saying we're Semitic also. So now there's a, it's a back and forth in the argument. And we're trying to figure out, like, why no one's coming to their defense, but they're losing a lot. So I just want to know. I wasn't sure if you're following it or not. So I want to ask you about yeah, it I, since we was talking about shot. I heard, I heard the rumblings of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that me and my podcast partner said we're going to watch it. Mm -hmm. so that we could talk about it. Um, but two things. Number one, <clears throat> I I'll give Shaq a lot more credit than I will Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley should <laughs> never be allowed to talk about race. Because the thing with Charles Barkley is this. You get his heart is in the right place. You get his mind is in the right place. But as I said on the Shaq's All-Star Comedy Jam, like in regards to Shaq, when Charles Barkley speaks, it's like his mind and his mouth is playing Marco Polo. They got they don't, they don't find each other because right. this man says some author. Most of the time on Inside the NBA, he don't even finish a point. Like he'll start a point. You know, first of all, let me tell you something. Mike D'Antoni, when they play defense, everybody know that Shaquille. For, look at let me let me tell you something. For LeBron James <laughs> is the greatest athlete, very athletic. When you dominate in the league. Because down there at Phoenix, they didn't play no defense. <laughs> like, so what are you doing? <laughs> like, so so when he speaks on, on serious issues, right. I feel like this is the drunk uncle who opened up the gun cabinet. That's you fair. have a machine gun in your hand and you're drunk. That's fair. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, what's interesting to me is a lot of black folks who really have done their homework are saying that Kanye <clears throat> wasn't really wrong if you really listen to what he was saying. Right. But the bottom line is this. This is America. <clears throat> There's a tradition and a history when Black people, Black men speak out. Yep. You get whipped. You get flogged. Yep. You get hung. Feathered. Tarred and, and feathered. And, and that's, that's what this is. And the unfortunate part the very unfortunate part is from that that history of 400 years ago that still exists today, we still aren't coming to each other's rescue. Nah, that, that, that's it. what I want to get to. Right. We're watching it. Right, this right. This has been going on. This, this, this is why when, when white people say to me, or I hear white people say, slavery was 400 years ago. Get over it. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get over something when the very thing we're supposed to get over, the practices still exist today. To this very day. That is the yeah, all the, That's why niggas all the don't NBA rush. players. That's why we don't rush to each other's aid because since slavery, we have been trained, watch this and learn from it so it and doesn't don't say shit. Right. Yeah, and, and same thing happened with Kaepernick. And when the Kaepernick situation fell out, most of the NFL players stood back and sat silent. They just Nothing. watched him pretty much get uh, get expelled from the league, get ostracized, and they all sat back silently. You know, it was it was amazing to me to watch it, and we're watching it play out right now. Watching watching my man get broken, buck broken, and then everybody just sitting there looking and like, oh, I hope it don't hit me. But yet, the black community, I'm, and, and and I'm gonna put a fault on the black community. You know, we like you say, right is right, wrong is wrong. We're gonna tell the truth. The, the black community wants to call Nick Cannon all type of names and say he folded. But yet, if I'm Nick Cannon and I see when I do make a stance and like you just said, Aries, that we don't help. So now when I'm being threatened with losing everything, I mean, y'all ain't even taking it. It's more understandable for me to stand and fight if you're behind me. But if you don't see those behind you are attacking you, too. Right. Right. So you're attacking me and you're not supporting me. So I'm getting hit from them, that community and my own community. Why would, okay, I need to look out for myself right now. Cause obviously you are not going to do it. So no, right. I don't think you folded. I think you did what was best in your best interest. Well, to what Ari said earlier, what, what, to what Ari said earlier, right. He, he said that this will happen. You'll get, you'll get flogged. You'll get, you'll get whipped <clears throat> right. and everyone's watching what they also do, which is what they did with Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, They'll get your own people. They'll give them the whip and have them whipping you and beating you too. Yeah, that's so exactly. that's the exact same situation that we got going on right now with Kyrie because you don't have Adam Silver coming out and making a whole statement about it. You, exactly. Yep. 
Exactly. We'll take, <laughs> exactly. This, from you. We'll take this from you. Absolutely. And, and, and listen, man, I, I, I thought the biggest disservice, and I talked about this on my podcast, I think the biggest disservice was when things got really hot with police killing black people. And uh, at one point, the NBA talked about uh, forfeit, not forfeiting games, but not playing. And it seemed like, because I, I think there was at least one or two games where they tried to take off or were going to take off. And I said, what powerful a statement would it be if every player in the NBA, the right. NFL, Major League Baseball, every sport, every person of color went, we're not playing no more games until change is implemented. Powerful. And stood on that. Mm -hmm. But what, what did we do? We threatened, but we didn't, full, we didn't go through with it. Right. We threatened. Didn't and, and if there's we'd done nothing, the sanitation. And if oh, my there's bad. Nothing, I was just saying, if we'd have done a sanitation strike, we'd have been good. Just like that. If we'd done the same mold, same model as that, we'd have been cool. But like I said, our players ain't going to stand together. But, but, and this is what powerful people of white America know about us. When it comes to the game of chicken, we always move. We always move. That's true. And we moved. That's so true. if we're going to keep moving, then how do we expect to get anything done? Now, my second point back to that was, you know, it really hurts my heart when I get into arguments with black people. And, and, and you know, I tr I'm trying not to because it's such a waste of time. When I get into arguments about black people about Obama and I hear black people go, what did Obama do for us? And I sit there and I go, first of all, a lot of y'all are saying that without knowing anything about how Congress works. And I think it was Mitch McConnell. I always get this guy's name fucked up. It's either Mitch McConnell or uh, I think it's Mitch McConnell. It's but Mitch he, McConnell. Yeah, he, he, he basically here. said, we are going to make sure we don't pass anything through that he tries to pass. Now, you think that's a coincidence? You think that's by accident? You know why that is. Them, them right-wing Republican white men stand behind their own <clears throat> and have done so historically since the beginning of time. It's why Emmett Till's killers got off. It's why, it's why the four little black girls who died in the church bombing in Birmingham, their killer got off. It's the reason why Medgar Evers' killer didn't go face justice in jail till he was damn near 80. The system has been designed to make sure they look out for their own. So regardless as to what black people think Obama did or didn't do, let's just look out for our own the way they do. That's Let's true. send the message. That's true. Whether you 100%. think he did something or didn't. And the fact remains is he actually did do something for black people. Black people needed health care. If you go Google his accomplishments, well, there was a lot of things he did for black people. And the things he couldn't do, Congress fought him tooth and nail. If you watch the three-part documentary on HBO in pursuit of the perfect union, he shows you what he did for black people. He had a thing called the young... It was called the Young Black Boys Initiative. And I, and I might be fucking this up, but basically it was like a, a, a mentorship for young black boys to make mm -hmm. sure they receive, uh, uh, receive <clears throat> proper education and that they were looked out for and guided by black elders. So when you go, what did he do for us? He did everything he could, he could given the circumstances. I got to go back to Dave Chappelle's joke in uh, that special, I think it's called Equanimity. When he goes, mm. why do you think it was easier uh, for Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner, to change his sex than it was for Muhammad Ali to change his fucking name? Mm. Ah, good point. Good you point. Mm. That's why when people sit there and go, he did more for the gays and the transgenders. Okay, well, the <laughs> gays and the transgenders ain't niggas. Our resume has always been put to the bottom of the pile. Hey, I'm going to tell you this, Aries. I I, and one I more need thing to... before you go. Okay. And, 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 and this is where, because I know, you know, let's be honest, homophobia is deep in the black community. Yeah, it's deep. But you mean to tell me, okay, so Obama signed into legislation some shit to help gays and transgenders. Ain't no black brothers and sisters in the gay community. Well, that's true. Whether, whether you for it or not, ain't, ain't no black transgenders. Whether you for it or not, we the same skin color. We might not like the same thing sexually, but we the same skin color. So he helped them. How is that excluded as far as him not helping people and the black people not benefiting? He so, helped them. He helped our black brothers and sisters. 
So I got to go. I got it. What's the name of that documentary again? Because I'm going to be honest it's, with you. What is it? It's called uh, The Pursuit of the Perfect Union. The Pursuit of the Perfect Union. It's, it's, I, a, it's a three part documentary. OK, mm. I'll definitely go check that out because you're talking to a person right now who says, my man, do nothing for the black community. That's my stance. Right. But I'm willing to go back and look and say, you know, I could be wrong because I didn't I didn't know about that. So I want to go back and check it out. But my stance of right now is that's where I stand. Um, okay, let me throw this at you. Let me throw this at you. In, in the documentary, uh, two brothers who I absolutely respect to death, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Cornell West okay. and Eric Dyson. Mm -hmm. There's a moment where they're having like this black summit and 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 uh, uh, Eric Dyson gets worked up. Mm -hmm. And so much so that uh, uh, Professor Cornell West puts his arms around him and is trying to calm him down. Like, calm down, brother. We hear you, we hear you. And he goes, Lyndon B. Johnson had to deal with race. And he named two other white presidents had to deal with race. Why is Obama the only president that doesn't have to deal with race? Like he's avoiding it. And this is what I say to that. Here's the reality. This is a, this is a baton race, not a sprint. The goal is to have the 15th black president, not to be one and done. Obama had to be strategic. If Obama went in there just solely trying to be the president, for black people or deal with race the way they think he should deal with race that closes the door for future black presidents because the first thing white america is going to do is go see see they get their first black president and he's not presidential obama's job hmm. is to be presidential which hmm. means to be the president for everybody if he had solely just went to go look out the blacks that does not make it possible because at the end of the day, he couldn't have become president without whites' votes. Yes, he had the majority of our votes, 90%, but that wasn't enough. He could not have been president without white people's votes. So if he goes in there and he's not presidential and he's only looking out for black people, how does that help white America go, well, we learned our lesson. Next time they get a black president, we ain't voting for him because of that. <laughs> He has Wait, to be strategic. So, and when you leave the door open for the next black president, then we can continuously try and make the change needed for us. But it does not help us if we're one and done. Now, being logical. And, and the reality, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but the reality is this. There's going to be another white president. There's going to be yeah, many yeah. more white presidents. Definitely. There's going to be more white presidents than there is black presidents. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I'm just sitting here like, if, if if Obama does that and goes strictly after the black people, no matter how much white people may have been turned off, they're still gonna vote for another white person. Right. So what's the point in doing that? There was all, there's gonna always be a future white president. That's a good perspective. So I just don't understand how that, in, in terms of a game plan, how that's smart. Yes, all those yeah. other white presidents can deal with race because even if they piss their white people, their white supporters off, future white supporters, there's going to be another white president. Right. So there's mm -hmm. no risk in them taking on race. That's race. like the that's like the Trump that's and true. Biden situation. <clears throat> Trump pissed off everybody, but shit, we just threw Biden right in behind him. Yeah. There's always going to be another white president. Right. There's always going to be another one. So what's the game plan in doing that? So I want to say Obama this real quick. Not deal with race the way black people want him to. Because strategically, it closes the door. You, right, you, right, the point, right. the point, the point that you're making right now, right? I will be honest. The point that you're making, I didn't think about it from that perspective. You know what I mean? And here's where, here's where I think people got to be honest with themselves. That you do got to stop and look at it from every angle. From my angle, I got to consider that. I'm going to check out that documentary because there may be some things that I'm not familiar Please with. Do. I wasn't familiar with the Please. documentary. So I'm glad that you brought that up because that is another perspective that I wasn't familiar with. You know, so I will check that out. Why we're you kinda... know you know who Tanichi Coates is? Tanichi Coates? Yeah. Negative. You don't know who Tanichi Coates is? No, I don't think so. Okay. He's he's along the same lines of an Eric Dyson and a Cornell West. He's okay. in the documentary. One of the things that he points out is towards the end of Obama's presidency, the last remaining, whatever it was, mm -hmm. six months to a year, there had been so many things that Obama did within the White House in terms of black renaissance, mm -hmm. black excellence, a lot of the functions that he held. He, he did a lot of things where otherwise we would never have done. We, have, we would have never have gotten that opportunity. And I know I've heard black people say, 
well, you know, black symbolism isn't important. He, he was he was a symbol. That was just black symbolism isn't important. Why is that not important? Who it's says absolutely that? Absolutely important. I, 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 no, I'm telling you what I've heard black people say. Okay. But Obama's presidency was just black symbolism. Well, wait a minute. Obama's legacy is our legacy. That's in the history books. We had not only the first black president, but by far one of the smartest presidents ever, Harvard Law. This man was a Harvard Law student, one of the most successful presidents. How do we as black men look at that and not pay that its fair due? Because you know if he had been a horrible president, if he had been like Trump, white America would have went, see? They, they would have told their sons it. and daughters, do you see? They, they're incapable. They're not smart enough. And I can agree with that. I, I, I can agree with so that. So now as black men, I we can, can go, not only did we do it, but we did it better than anybody else. We had the smartest ever. We had the most successful presidents ever. We did that. But don't we always do it better than everybody else? Don't we always do it better than Symbolism is everything. Symbolism definitely is everything. But, but, but why are we denouncing look up it? To. But why are we denouncing need something it? To look up to. You got, you got children that's going to look at like, hey, I want to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just looking at athletes, I want to be an athlete. I want to be a singer. I want to be a rock star. I want to be a movie star. Oh, now I can be president. You know, we can look at things that require using our minds and we can actually continue to build from that. So, yeah, yeah. symbolism, everything, because it, it gives you a benchmark. You know, growing up, not seeing not seeing black superheroes is big. You want to see something that where you feel like you can change the world. Right. And now you got hope. And when you got hope in the people, that changes the dynamic of everything. So, and of course, the, it puts fear in the minds of the people that are, yeah, you know, in a position yeah. of power. But right. Aries, Aries, before you go, Aries, let me answer your question because you said you asked, "Why are you denouncing it?" And I want, I want to make sure this picture is painted clearly. The the denouncing comes from the not knowing because the things that you just said, I didn't know. You know what I mean? That's why I say I'm willing to say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm look. I'm gonna go back and look from a different perspective on these things that I was not. I were. I was not aware of. So the announcing comes from not knowing. So does that just goes back to our people being uneducated in a lot of things? So that's why we're still in the position we're in. A little bit. A little bit. You know, okay. it, it's it's such a quick talking point to go. He didn't do anything for <clears> black <throat> people. Well, listen, <clears throat> baseball was it going to change because of one guy? Yes, uh, Jackie Robinson lit the match, but it would take more than him. It would take Hank Aaron. It mm -hmm. would take Willie Mays. So you're going to put all of this weight on the first black president's shoulders to fix everything in two terms? No, this is a baton race. It's a hell of a he point. I can't it debate it. As far as he can take it, now it's going to be up to the next one to grab the baton and take it further. Right, right. Can't, I can't, not I can't to mention that. all the fires he had to put out for Bush. But, you know, oh, not to oh. mention, yes. <laughs> let's, let's, come on, that's, that's a whole nother show. Let's not go down that road. Oh, my I'll just, God. I'll just throw that out there real quick, but go ahead. So, <laughs> no, no, that's a hell of a point. I'm like, this is, yeah. So question, um, I didn't know this until I heard you actually talking about it because I never heard the original statement um, about from Mike Epps. Um, and I know you've covered this a few times, but it's new to me, right? So police i guess white police kill us because we kill us and that's yeah that was, statement. that was his justification yes he said he said cop, cops kill us because we kill us uh so we got to stop killing ourselves and my point to mike uh -huh. was that that's dangerous propaganda mike mm -hmm. because if you again if you know if you've done your homework and know your history when you talk about the tulsa oklahoma uh massacre rosewood uh, atlanta yeah atlanta these were black people who dressed in their Sunday's best on a daily, mm -hmm. right. well to own their own businesses, did not need white people for shit, and uh, was more successful than the white community. Absolutely. And they got yeah. burned down to the ground. They got murdered, slaughtered. You know, when you look at the movie Rosewood, right. same thing. Mm -hmm. So to somehow suggest that cops kill us because we kill us is the most dangerous shit you could ever say. Well, ignorant. But not to mention untrue. Yeah. Well, what was the excuse when, you know, back at this time when we were just being killed? like, there's no excuse because we were getting killed as soon as we got off the boat. T Tulsa, Oklahoma is the perfect example because or Black Wall Street, because it was literally predicated on a lie that a white woman told. So yep. one of one of the people that lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, whistled or, or, or tried to get it, a particular white woman and it found out it was a lie. They went in there into Black Wall Street, tried to get this man out. They said, this is not happening. We're not allowing it. Then they right. started to go to war. And then this was the first, this, 
This was the first airstrike <clears throat> on U.S. soil or well, first U.S. airstrike on U.S. soil. So to, and, and and it was all based around a lie that a white woman told about a black man. It could have simply been. I mean, maybe it would have been a firefight. Maybe it would have been a gunfight. Maybe it would have just been a rumble. But you you killed a, a, a thousands of people. You burnt down a whole community yeah. with an airstrike. You it, it's, it's well, look, I can give you a, mo- a more modern, a more modern example. When I was working for the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, right now I got labeled the the Negro that's hothead, the, 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 the angry black man, because as I'm sitting in my training class, there's a white sergeant who literally states in front of all of these minorities in this training class that he wanted to get the first kill. Because now, mind you, I was working inside of a jail. We didn't work the road at that point. We were in a jail. But when you leave the jail, you put your gun on, your gun belt, you drive home. He say, I drive through a certain way. I go through the hood. My wife don't want me going through the hood. Oh, nah, nah, babe. I have my gun on me. Trust me. I want to be the first jail sergeant to get a confirmed kill. Wait, wait. I looked around. Wait, did you just say that? Is he saying he want to be the first jail sergeant to get a confirmed kill? Now, he's talking about people in the hood because the topic is the hood. And he had no problem saying this in front of all of us. So, therefore, you know, when I speak up, I get kicked out. I, I start my career start doing the you know, the okie doke dance from that point forward. So, but the point is this, there was no, there was, we didn't, he wasn't talking about, we didn't kill each other. He already had a desire. Now I'm not saying every white cop has his desire, but he had that desire. So when I heard you say what Mike Epps said, I'm like, brother, where you been? The hell you been at? Like I I was, I was blown off by that. Again, that may be old to some people, but that was new to me. I was like, wow, that, that blew my mind. It was yeah, a long time and, where you and, take and, the first opportunity. Just, you know, hey, it ain't really that they want to, we're doing it. And it's like, oh, let's do it. It's just, here, as soon as we got opportunity to take them out, just like uh, Pilmani was saying, he said, hey, when they got opportunity, let's come up with a lie. Let's orchestrate a reason to go in and mm-hmm. destroy what they built. You know, anytime they're going to do that, they have the opportunity, they're going to take it. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, Mike was upset because I called him on his bullshit. And then that turned into, hey man, we should do a celebrity boxing match. So you, you want why? You want... Why was he mad? My question is, what? Why was he <laughs> mad at you? What? You know, like that, that was and, real life bullshit. So why was he mad at you? Uh, you know, comics got egos, man. And when you show somebody up, uh, you know, that's what it turns into. It seemed to be you know? a lot of beef in a, in the comic comedian world. I didn't know it was like really. Right. It's like almost like like <laughs> hip hop or right. something. Like 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 it's dangerous to be over here being a comedian or something, man. Like what's going on? Silly man, silly. Like, so so it, I mean, it never came into fruition. But you think if y'all would have had a celebrity uh boxing match, you would have whooped his ass? I'm not fighting Day Day. Fight Day Day. Hey, Day Day, man. Nah, Day Day would have ran around. Don't the do Day Day like that. Day-Day, man. Oh, man. that's crazy. Hey, but speaking of that, um, you you said something else that I wanted to ask you about, and it was another perspective, and I didn't know this, and I'm like, I'm like, God damn, like. You know what I mean? Eric be dropping nuggets because I ain't know this either about the um the Oscars when Chris uh Rock was slapped by Will Smith and you said I would have responded the same way. Why? And then you went on to explain why you would have responded the same way. The first time an all black cat can you can you share with uh yeah, what you share before? Will Will Packer, uh who's one of the biggest <laughs> black movie producers in Hollywood, you know, girls trip right along. Um this was the first time that the Oscars was ever being produced by an all black production company. So you had a couple important things at night. You had that, uh, you had the fact that two of the female hosts hosting the Oscars were two black women, Regina Hall and uh, I think Wanda Sykes. Mm-hmm. I, I wanna say Wanda Sykes. Um, you had Will Smith winning the actor, for, uh, winning the award for best actor. So you had him as a black man winning the the the, the top-notch award. So it just would have been a horrible stain on us if we had treated it like it was the Source Awards. Right. I mean, because there were so many, you know, again, two of the three hosts with Black women. This never happened before. The mm-hmm. Oscars, Hollywood's most prestigious night, is being produced by an all-Black production company. That's never happened before. Uh, and and the one uh, and another award that really got swept under the rug completely was the fact that Denzel kindly gave Sam Jackson an award. Mm. Talk about overdue flowers. So this was a big night for us. 
And to have that moment turn into something like the Source Awards, it it feeds into the it feeds into the the stigma, it, it, the stereotype. They don't know how to act. Look right. at them. We right. we give them we give this is our biggest night, and we put it in their hands. And look what they do. Right. Yeah. They were now I know us. that a lot of black people will dismiss that by saying, "Who gives a f- what they think?" Or we need to get our own award show. I've been saying. The same mm-hmm. way you got DreamWorks made up of De- David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and Steven Spielberg. We should have been to that. The only one that exists on that level is an individual, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. But right. where is the where is the, the united forces? As far- so while we talking about we should have our own, well, we don't. We should do our own, but we don't. But we don't. So until we do, right. this is what we got. Right. And now you want to f- that up? And taint that and make them go, told you, look at them. Right. Now, I'm not going to let Hollywood off the hook either, because as much as they want to say that moment was a disgusting moment, well, does it trump the moment where you refuse to let Hattie McDaniel sit with her white co stars when she won right. the Oscar for Gone with the Wind? And mm. then somebody wrote her speech where at the end of her speech, she says, I'm a credit to my race. Right. Mm. So, you know, Hollywood already has its own black eye. In Absolutely. Terms of ugliness. But one wrong don't make another, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So I just think it would have been very irresponsible if Chris Rock had responded the way Street Bruh. say he should have responded. You know what was interesting? Street <laughs> always talk about how to respond, and yet they ain't got shit. And get locked up. And can't they, always, they always family. They always talk about how to yeah. respond, but when you got situations like Trayvon Martin or Emmett, you know, an Emmett Till or oh. your, you know, even Freddie Gray, the street Negroes don't never respond when it's time to actually back up their people. Say but, that you know, again. That's another thing. Wait, 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 wait. Say but, that again. But, but have no problem. But have no problem calling you a pussy or a coward yeah. or soft because you didn't respond as they would. Well, the reason why you're in jail is because you respond the way you do. Mm. But, but wait, wait. The reason why the niggas ain't got shit because they respond the way they way. do. They respond mm. the way they do to us. Let's be let's let's bring it all in perspective. Like when I right. saw a prom picture and the little girl sitting in her dress, and then he got the young man sitting in his tuxedo with with daddy and all his friends with shotguns behind him. Wait, 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 wait. What about what about when 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 the police are shooting our innocent children? What what the hell them guns at then? Like, mm. but when it comes to us. Oh hell yeah, we gonna pull them guns out. I heard I heard a song. This is by this is by right. All that, that's, that's, that's exactly what's gonna right, happen. Right, right. They got hey, they got them notes. I told y'all the brother could sing. Y'all thought I was lying, man. <laughs> the mentality, see, it was, man. It was C Murder. That's, that's uh, right. I'm gonna say the name. You know, I, I love No Limit back in the day. I love C Murder, Mass P, and, and you know. Uh, Mass P, I think, honestly, I think Mass P's face should be pasted somewhere when Black History come around. The man did so much stuff and opened so many doors, right? But right. C Murder had a song one time. And I can't remember all the words verbatim, but it was talking about how I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill this brother. But yet, when the police come, I'm gonna run. Wait, 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 wait. You gonna kill the brother? But when the white folk pull up, you not trying to run. That's why we'll do it to us. We won't, we won't take that same energy and that same mentality over there. So Rick, uh, what, Rick, what uh, Rick was saying, I'm like, man, that's it's a beautiful point. It's a beautiful point. You know, I will say this because we talked about it before we started rocking and rolling, but now that we on. The subject, let me go ahead and say it. Even with the Corey Holcomb situation, and I've been I've been called all kind of cowards because I didn't retaliate the way the street said I should have retaliated. Mm -hmm. But my reality is this. You know, I'm responsible for my mortgage and the kids that live under this roof. Right. I'm responsible for the bills and the schools that they go to. So it's like in that movie, All Eyes on Me about Tupac, Clifton Powell, who I'm cool with. Cool brother, one of the greatest actors in the, in the acting game. He's in the he's in the prison yard, and he says to Tupac, "Don't do something in five seconds or in five minutes that can get you fifty fucking years." Mm-hmm. And it's like, if I'm responsible for my children's well being, my woman's well being, I'm the sole provider for the bills and the roof and the food in the fridge and the clothes on their back. I'm gonna do something that could potentially fuck all that up when it's, listen, just because something don't get handled the streets way right. doesn't mean it don't get handled. Right. And I, and I, and, I chose, actually... and I chose to stop and think and go, now if you do the worst thing you could do, 
you jeopardize your future and your family. Right. If you do what the legal means says you can do, you've done something mm -hmm. while at the same time keeping yourself out of jail or putting right. yourself in a position where you can't provide and you're useless to your family. Right. So, but you know, the streets, again, man, you sued. That's a pussy move. As opposed to what you would do to take me out of position to take care of my family. That's a sign no, of intelligence. That it's not really the streets way, though. It's really the emotional way. People want us to respond according to our feelings in a moment. You got a lot of men that want other they men want to respond according to how sad they feel or how angry they felt mm -hmm. and make, like I said, a five second decision that will affect the rest of their lives or affect the, the lives of their children, their children's children, all of these things. So we want to, we want our people to act emotionally, honestly. Right. No, but Aries, like Aries is right. That is the, that is still, that's the mindset of the streets. That's, that's just how, that's how, not how black people think. That's how niggas think. And so you got a lot of niggas that looked at him like, man, I was a bitch move. Man, all the way you dealt with that, and, and he he I literally mean, just elaborated on why that would not be the wisest decision. You know how many times I didn't seen a number of people. I I I live in Los Angeles, and I don't live in a good part of Los Angeles. And a lot of a number of my friends is gangbangers, ex gangbangers, all of that. I didn't have many conversations with them. I didn't had many of of moments with them where I'm like, this probably finna go far left. And then come yeah. to find out, it's like, man, only reason I didn't do that is because woo woo woo, man. I'm, Already, if I go yeah. back, I ain't coming back out. Or I, I'm not going to do that and get 15 years. Or I, and it's like people will look at you. And I, I have to I talk to people about this all the time. Like, bro, just because you took a step back and said or, or said, man, I don't want no problems, whatever the case is, even though, you know, you knew you could have whooped their ass. And, that'll make you less of a man. And you know what, though? And that's and, and I, I respect I respect you, Aries, for that, because it's like you say, it ain't about responding in you no know, street style or anything like that. I, me, I, I use myself personally. You look at me. Oh, uh, I'm just an ordinary dude, which I am. But a lot of guys are walking around with certain levels of training that you have no clue of. Right. Including myself. Mm -hmm. Now you run in my face. Now I will defend myself. I'm not, you know, if you're trying to, you know, freaking hurt me or kill me, but you hit. All right. We'll, we'll handle this a different way. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not going to go down that road because if I do something to you, you know what? I'm laying next to this dude in, 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 in the bunk instead of my wife. My nice and, you know, my wife I want to lay, lay next to. I can't see my children the next morning. Why? Because I did something to you. You know what I mean? And people think, oh, that's the soft way to handle things. No, that's the intelligent way to handle things. Just because you can do something, it don't mean you always should. You know what I mean? Right. Me, myself, Listen, I tell my wife, I'm too old to be having fighting. Damn, 42 years old. If it looked like you about to hurt my kids, disrespect my woman or my mama, right. that's different story. Ball game. Different yeah, there's different levels to but, it. But I'll I'll take the L if it's just me, knowing that if I take this L, I cannot put myself in a position where, like you said, instead of being next to your wife, you in a bunk as the wife. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's, just, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just one of them things where I just thought about it and went, <clears throat> nah, you can handle this different. Right, right, right. Nah, hey, listen, uh, you got my support on that. I, I think you handled it the right way. And speaking of support, we running low, about down to seven minutes. I want to, I did want to ask you this question. Do you believe, um, and not necessarily trying to make it a black or white thing, but hey, we are black men, so we do want our people to support us and what we're doing. Do you believe or feel like the black community shows you the, su the support that you're looking for? Absolutely not. Damn. Absolutely not. You, you know, you know what's really crazy is when you look at some of the numbers that some of these black celebrities have on Instagram and social media. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you realize that if we were to say to each other, hey, man, whatever you got, you want me to post? I'm going to post it. Mm -hmm. So while you might only have half a million followers, I got 15 million. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put a percentage of those eyes on your shit. Mm -hmm. So help blow you up. Help right, you right. go viral. We should be doing that like a black Wall Street. So why do right? you like, think we're not doing secret, it? Like it's a secret society. Right. Hey, man, I know I'm Kevin Hart. I know I'm the biggest movie star on the planet. I know you might just be a guy who's nowhere near my level. But mm -hmm. send me your shit. So I can put post, you on. Mm. So I can help you. Like, like, let's let's really do this. Shit. And, and like I said, the fact that we don't have a dream works of our own. Mm -hmm. You telling me Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, some of the richest black people on the planet, Denzel, Eddie Murphy, none of them can have a meeting and go, let's form a movie studio or a television company so that we don't have to keep coming hat in hand. Right. 
Nate Parker had a hell of a time. He had a tough time getting his uh, Birth of a Nation movie out because he couldn't get the support from his own people, you know, and he Mm -hmm. named a few people, but he tried not to put too many people out there. But he should have had all kind of people behind him. Right. But, yeah, I'm but, telling you, it's 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 a, it's a psychology, mm-hmm. uh, and, and 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 it's it shows you how deep the damage of slavery has been upon us. Oh yeah, because that that goes from there on. That's how deep the psychological fucking is based on that. That's why Did you said that earlier, Aries. Did you say yeah. that earlier? You said people say slavery was 400 years ago. Get over it. But what, did, over what it. did you what did you just say? You it's said everything that we're the psychological damage that we have going on right now is a product of that shit from 400 years ago. But what you so, are doing, Aries, <laughs> let me say this real quick. What you are doing, the fact that let's say right now you decided to come on Inside the Nation Radio. Um, I don't know if you remember, we had some conversations way back when, you know, like a year ago, and then I re- decided to reach out. Hey, man, would you come guest uh, uh, on the podcast? Sure. You know, and we worked it out, and you showed up. Uh, and I also want to give a shout out to Dr. Boyce Watkins. He'll be here um, also. We'll be airing his um, next week. So it's brothers like this who will say, okay, yeah, let's work it out, and we'll work it out, and I'll come through to your podcast. You never heard of me, you know, before. Didn't know, never heard of the podcast, anything before. But he just, so what he's saying, I want to say that, say this. What the brother just finished saying is he's living it. I just wanted to point it out, but I give you nice. that. But, but, and, and listen, not to be the dead horse, and I would really love it, brother. Please watch The Perfect Union on HBO. And then let's me and you have a conversation. Because again, the fact that you're even willing to change your mind when so many black people have been set in stone, man, that ain't do nothing for black people. Mm-hmm. It just hurts my heart because think about this. Trump colluded with Russia. He, he, he created the greatest, he did the most heinous shit you could ever do, treason. He betrayed his country. Mm-hmm. And yet those right-wing white men let him go. <laughs> yeah. So again, yeah. they look out for their own, which is why I'm going, despite whether you think Obama did something or did not, let's just say f- and mm-hmm. stand behind him the way they do their own. I, 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 like again, that perspective, I can't logically sit here and debate it, right? Because it's true. Same thing we're saying with Kanye. Like, oh, well, he did this. And he's what? He's trying to do something different now. Let's stand. For, so I'm with you on that. I'm definitely with you on that. Um, we are at two minute mark. I got, I got another question I want to ask you. I got two more, three more questions I want to ask you right. before we get out of here. Um. Is there anything in your career that you're extremely proud of or something that you had a wish you had a redo button for? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Dave Chappelle got that famous skit when keeping it real goes wrong. Uh, there's a time and place <laughs> for everything. Um, right. And, and certain interviews, maybe it just wasn't the time and the place. Uh, because there's certain things that I've did and said where it has bit me in the ass like a German shepherd in the 60s. Bruh. <laughs> I mean, it, it just, man. You know, I, I remember I had lunch with dinner with Chris Rock one time, and I was trying to get him. This is the time he had his show on HBO, and I was trying to get him to possibly produce a show for me, a sketch show. Mm-hmm. So I went and had dinner with him. And at the end of the dinner, he goes, I'm going to give you three good pieces of advice. Uh, stay stay funny, keep writing, and try not to piss these white folks off. And this is Hollywood. That's why when you're, whether in what, whether, whatever form of entertainment it is, acting, singing, dancing, sports, it's all under the umbrella of entertainment. Mm-hmm. When you piss them white folks off, Kanye, Kyrie, mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and listen, as a man of pride, just being a man, period. Men are prideful, we're egotistical. But being a black man, none of us want to do this. <laughs> Come hand. with our hats in our hands. And you, you, we don't want to do that. But it's just crazy being in this business and in life when we can't step the way they step, mm-hmm. you know, because the repercussions are different. Uh, unless yeah. you are so self-sufficient and so at a point where you don't need them, most of us can't step the way they step. No, that's 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 factual. That's factual. Like um, 
I, I know what you're referring to, and I've seen things exact same. As a matter of fact, before we actually went live on the podcast, we were just talking about this. I was talking about my other platforms and how I can do something on there that, you know, the platform YouTube goes crazy, but I go to another channel and see the same thing. I'm like, what? What's, what was so bad when I did it? You know, it's the same exact thing. So definitely understand. Right. Last question. And I know all the brothers are going to have to weigh in on this. I got to get this from you before I let you go, man. Top five NBA players. And if Jordan ain't your number one, why? Oh, well, you know, he's my number one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, <clears throat> Larry. Bird, uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, damn, uh, I got a uh, shit. LeBron don't fit in that nowhere. Like, because the know, question's being asked: If he passes Kareem, does that make him the greatest? That don't matter to me. That don't matter to me. It don't matter to me either. I'm, I, I, cause yeah, was, listen, was Kareem, man, was Kareem man, considered the greatest? Why he was leading the score? No. So why if somebody passed him, they become the greatest? It doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's funny. Uh, people when they talk about goat and the recipe for goat status, there's a word that people don't understand that's necessary. It's called totality. Thank you. And the totality of goat gumbo, it's about impact stats, uh, popularity, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a bunch of things. And while Kareem, from a statistical standpoint, is valid in terms of impact, he didn't change the game the way Michael did. Michael no. took it global. Yes. Um, he wasn't very personable to the media. If he was, he might have been able to have that impact. But right. everybody that knows anything knows about Kareem knows it. Kareem was very aloof. Kareem was yeah. perceived as mean. Uh, you know, he didn't mean. fuck with the media. And in order for you to have an impact on the game, you have to be the face of it. Right. And right. in order for you to be the face of it, you got to know where the camera is. Mm -hmm. You got to smile a little bit. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard always said, when I was coming up, somebody in sports told me, always know where the camera is. And when you see it... <laughs> right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. When people talk about, well, if, if rings, if it's about rings, Robert Ory got seven. And I, I, I hate the fact that I even have to explain this. I feel like a mother who has to cut up my child's meat for them to eat. Like, this, this, I, I can't believe I have to explain this to you. Mr. Rubble, man, difference. you got to, though. There's a difference in being the reason you win versus winning for a reason. Yes. Shaq, Kobe, Magic, Bird, LeBron, they're franchise. They're, they're, the, they're, they're the face of the franchise. Right. And at one point, the face of the league. Right. They're the champions. Their teams win. Uh, they're the reason their teams win. Robert Ory, right place, right time. And I'm not on no Big Shot Bob. You need your role players. As Shaq would say, you need your others. Mm -hmm. But he was right place, right time, Hakeem. Right place, right time, Robertson and Duncan. Mm -hmm. Right place, right time, Shaq and Kobe. Yep. He won for a reason. Yep. He wasn't the reason. There's a difference. Man, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's it right there. Hey, listen, and, and here's I'm, my last thing. Um, <clears throat> when you look at LeBron's record, what is he, four and six? Something like four and eight, I think. Yeah, no, no, four, four and six. Four, like four and six. six in the finals. Four, four and six. six. Uh, four okay. and six. Uh, and Michael's six and oh. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question, fellas, and I, and I hope that you respond accordingly. What would you rather have? A big that works sometimes four and six or an average that works all the time six and oh? <sighs> Oh man! Hey, we are gonna take the six rings. That's how we, hey, that's how hey, we do it. Hey, I'm going. By the way, with 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 that said, right. I'm going Kobe one. I'm going MJ two, and then I'm taking Hakeem, Shaq, and Will. I'll take him at the five. And I don't five. get how LeBron passed Kobe. Hey, Aries, Aries, I got I got I got to open it for that's a, a completely different if you, ball, if you ball really, generation. If you're interested, we got another spot open. Just that, that, that it literally just opened up. As soon as he said Jordan won, won number one, we just opened up another spot for our co host. Like, Rick, you got to go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go. Nah, we stay. Just like Kobe stays. No, man. Hey, listen, I'm, this last thing I got to say, and we finna get out of here. We are, our time has expired. Two rings. Oh, real quick, real quick, real quick, if I could, because mm -hmm. I've been doing all this talking. Uh, make sure y'all go check out my podcast. It's called Spears and Steinberg. Definitely. It's available on all streaming platforms. 
hit me up on Instagram, slide in my DMs. I'll, I'll personally send you the links, chop it up with you. And I got to emphasize, even though I know we just over 400 episodes, please, please start from the beginning and go in order. It matters comedically in terms of the callbacks, the jokes, the evolution of mm -hmm. the show itself. It's much more, uh, uh, it'll be much more rewarding to you if you start from the beginning. And also, we're available on YouTube, but I prefer you listen because it's more of a polished, finished product. Send me those links. Those links are going to be in the description section. So when y'all watch this, make sure you just scroll down and click that link. I did say that was the last question, Aries. A lot. I got one more question. This is, this is the absolute last one. What, what do you want to be remembered as when it comes to you as a man and, and, and or as a professional? You know, my manager asked me this question uh, in terms of my career goals. And he goes, you want to be rich or you want to be right? Because very rarely can you be rich and right. Um, and as Dave Chappelle said in his special in the belly room, when he goes, uh, some dude, people come up to me, go, hey, man, you my hero. He goes, being your hero, right. I'm trying to be rich. <laughs> because often heroes don't get rich. Right. So I would love to be both. I'd love to be rich and right. Uh, because I know I've been right about a lot of shit, but it's kept me from being rich. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is absolutely true. I, I can't say I can disagree with that. With that being said, you know, we have reached the end of our podcast show. We had an hour and six minutes. Before we go, right down there below, y'all see it? Subscribe to We The People University. It's a platform going towards 100 million views, over 340,000 subscribers. Make sure y'all go check it out. I give out valuable information over there. Um, it's not, if you if you ever say, well, I never dealt with the police, if you if you will, you know, there's a very high likelihood that you You said will. you used to be a cop? I used to be a police a sheriff. That, from paramedic, then I worked inside of the jail, then I went to the road as a police officer. Let me, I, I got a question for you. Uh, actually, I actually got two questions. Okay. One, the universe, because it says university platform. So does that mean y'all mainly play to colleges? Wait, say it again. Because it says we the people university platform. Because mm -hmm. it says university. Does that mean y'all mostly play to colleges? No, it, I got university because I'm teaching people their basic rights. Here's the thing. If you've ever been stopped by the police officer before, you, a, a traffic citation, there's a chance you left $100,000, 50000 to 100000 sitting on the side of the road because most people have to have no clue. First off, police don't know the law. We were never taught the law in the academy. That's the biggest misconception ever. So when I stop you, I don't know I'm violating your rights. You have to know your rights for, for me to know that you're violated. And I'll give you a quick example. Most people don't know that police officers can only keep you on a traffic stop for as long as it takes them to write a citation or a warning. Anything after that, they need probable cause. They can't sit there and ask you, well, they can, but if you let them, hey, where are you going? Where are you coming from? All these different questions. If you say, I ain't asking no question, write my citation, but they still sit there, they have a general time period, roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. If they go past that, then at that point, Yes, a Fourth Amendment rights violation per the Supreme Court in Rodriguez versus the United States. We teach people these type of things on how to deal with the police, how not to get hurt, how not to get your rights violated. And if they are, get your money, get paid. And that's what that All platform right. teaches. And yeah, I just, you know, I, I had a couple of cop questions because, you know, uh, just, you know, in, 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 in dealing with police and I just had a couple of things I had always wondered. And, and this is my last one. And I promise Man, if, listen, if you, you, you can ask as many as you want. And you got my phone number. You can hit me up. I do this all the time. Trust me. I don't have no problems with it. Uh, have you ever pulled over with somebody and you look in the, in the trunk and there's a pound of cocaine and then you radio it in and you like, hey, squad the base. I just found three fourths a pound <laughs> of cocaine. Oh, man. No, I've never personally um, done that. Um, okay. I'm with you, but I, there was like, some trafficking going on through the Atlanta area on the 20 and you know, the department had word of it, man. I, the, the whole, they pit the truck. It was like one of those old Toyota trucks, the little small, you know, trucks, the old 1988 Toyota truck. And the, but the bed of it was full of cocaine, just bricks of cocaine. And so they pit that truck in the highway. It's like, it's, just, it's a snowstorm outside. It's covered. Oh, and was, I'm talking about money. Then a van, another van was That's following a lot it. Of money. Full of it. Yeah. Another van was following it. When they saw that, it just, it just pulled up and gave up. I mean, when I say cocaine galore, I'm like, wow. Who's your, who's your, who's your favorite basketball player? Oh, Jordan. I mean, I mean, like he's your guy. I, I, let me say this. Let me say this. I freaking hate Jordan off the court. I ain't gonna say hate. That's a strong word. I don't like him off the court, but as far as basketball, 
no one brought the grace, the style, the dominance to the game like Michael Jordan did. And he, like you say, the totality of everything. That's my guy as far as on the court. So as far, but 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 as, as far as sports, and it doesn't have to be Jordan. Is there a guy who is like your fucking your dude? Like yo. Depending on, I mean, in what aspect though? I'm, I'm just saying, like you're a fan, God. Hey, hey as far Randy as sports, that'd be me. Jordan. Randy Moss is my dude, okay, so, so, and he talked trash. All right, so here's my question to you: uh, You pull over Michael Jordan, and he <laughs> has got 15 keys of coke. Are you turning them in? Jordan going to jail. I already told you I'm like Jordan, of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how I'm trying to pick somebody that you absolutely love. It would be Shaq. It would be Shaq. That's my so guy. So you pull over Shaq, and he got 15 keys of coke. You, you, you going to ruin Shaq's life? Hey, Shaq, first off, man, you got 400 million. What the hell are you doing with 15 15 He's using it. He ain't trafficking it's, that. It's, it's part of the party. You don't even worry about it. <laughs> right. Are you ruining Shaq's life? Hey, listen, I ain't a police snowball, so I ain't even going there. That's my past life. Hey, Aries, it's me okay, interviewing you. Get out of here. <laughs> Whatever we have, it, folks. <laughs> Until next time, make sure y'all tune in, hit that like and subscribe button. Again, join in next week. We got Dr. Boys Watkins coming through, and we're still about to confirm Lil Boosie, so y'all make sure y'all check out these interviews coming up. We bring in all the heat for y'all. With that being said, we are out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, th th thanks for joining Inside the Nation Radio, your go-to for the latest happenings and the best discussions. Be sure to tune in next time, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Goodbye.